going to switch the opening. Okay. Good evening. The special meeting yeah. of Design Review Board number two oh, really? of March 7th, 2012 <laughs> is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones at this time. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker mm -hmm. cards provided at the table by the front door and submit Sorry. it to staff. <laughs> you will be called to, anyone you'll be called to speak as desired by the chairperson. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a particular project is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker one of these postcards by the front door and you will be re-noticed if a case is returned for redesign and comes back before 180 days. Current design review board agendas are available by calling our design review board hotline at 818 548 2140 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that all appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. In terms of a roll call, uh, board member Garagos? Here. Karoglian? Here. Malikian? Here. Zarifian? Here. And chairperson Sakai? Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on February 28, 2013. Oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. I have no oral communication cards. Person Sakai, none. Which brings us to staff announcements. At this point in time, uh, Mr. Platt, there are no staff announcements. So we will go directly to the two items on tonight's agenda. At this point in time, I'd like to turn it over, turn the meeting over, that is, uh, to Chairman Sakai. Or person Sakai. <laughs> Or would you like us just to go ahead and introduce the first case? Well, we were wondering if we should reorder the cases. We have more speaker cards on the first case and the second case. But maybe that's a problem with the staffs. There is no problem with the staffs. The only thing is, is that several individuals have already called to see when the second I or when the Buckingham case was on the agenda, and they were told already that it was going to be the second item on the agenda. So in case there might be any individuals coming at a later time simply because it's already sure. been noticed as a second item, I'm not sure how the board feels about that. So it's up to the board to make that decision. <coughs> Definitely keep the same I think order. we should just go more Yep, forward. keep it the same order. Okay, okay so for uh, 2 pdr one two two one five seven five a Do we just rather? Good evening, uh, Chair Sakai and board members. The first case before you is case number 2 PDR 1221575-A, located at 3338 Deer Creek Lane. This property is in the restricted residential zone, floor area ratio district 3, which is essentially a hillside property. Uh, the proposal is to construct a new 3,523 square foot, two-story single family residence with an attached street car garage in a classically influenced style. The third car space will be a tandem space. On May 3, 2012, the planning hearing officer approved a related case to this project, which is CUP case number PCUP 2011-023, to develop a new single family residence on a vacant lot that is less than 80 feet in width. The subject property has a width of approximately 68 feet. The 7,838 square foot subject site is a slightly skewed rectangular shaped lot located within the Oakmont View 4 subdivision. This subdivision was created in the, eight, in the 1980s and most homes were built in the, in the 80s and throughout the 19, nine, 1990s. The proposed residence will be centrally, centrally located on the lot and, and has a rectangular footprint, much like most of the homes on the street. The setbacks are 18 feet at the front, 10 feet along the side, and about 36 feet at the rear. The proposed site planning is appropriate uh, based on the lot shape, and its building footprint is also consistent with the chosen style. The proposed resident has a flat roof and a boxy appearance, if you uh, will see at the drawings behind you. The arrangement of the living spaces on the first, and second, on the first floor is larger than the second floor, 
which allows for the second floor to be stepped back from the first floor. The front elevation features a formal entry about one and one half story high. Uh, this entry is flanked by the garage, living room, as well as the second floor balconies. Its location creates an appearance of sym symmetry and a flat roof contributes to a smaller and or shorter building. The residence is generally, the residence generally has a horizontal emphasis as reflected in the fenestration pattern, the roof line, the repetitive design of the balusters, moldings, and the patterns of the lamp, limestone. The massing is addressed through the use of various cladding materials, such as stucco, limestone, and precast balusters. These materials create a laying effect that is beneficial in reducing the perceived mass of the building. The building has an overall height of 29 feet, 8 inches at the back due to the sloping lot from the front to the rear. At the front, the height is 23 feet, 9 inches. Due to the appearance of, of grandeur associated with this style, the use of stone and other high quality materials are important as well as the design and detailing of the building. The subject prop, uh, property will incorporate high quality materials. Now, generally this style does not lend itself to a hillside development, uh, but it is appropriate in this case due to the characteristics of the lot and the design of the overall subdivision, of this subdivision. Other homes in the neighborhood also so showcase the classically influenced design, as such the proposed residence shows a level of consistency with other homes nearby. The residence will be clad in stuck stucco, limestone, concrete moldings, concrete balusters, and fiberglass windows. These materials are high quality. The color palette is consisted of beige, ivory, and brown. These colors are also appropriate for the hillside and uh, are consistent with uh, some of the homes in this neighborhood. Now, although the applicant is not proposing this material, we uh, believe that faux materials of any kind are discouraged and only precast concrete seals, trim, cornices, horns, and balusters should be incorporated into the project. Uh, overall, staff supports this project with conditions. Uh, if you like, I can go over the conditions. Okay, condition number one, the overall height of the building should be reduced by decreasing the floor to, to ceiling height on each level. The residence and garage should be de depressed in a manner similar to other residences on the same side of the street. The height of the front entry should be lowered to fully reveal the shaped second floor accent window. The stucco should be smooth steel trowel or similar, such as a sand finish. And foam window seal and trim, cornices, coins, and balusters should not be used anywhere on this project. Vinyl or aluminum windows should not be used. And consider incorporating some drought tolerant plants that will mature to create a formal geometric appearance, such as hedges, consist, consistent with the design of the house. And last, all new landscaping shall be drought tolerant and or California friendly. And that concludes staff presentation. Thank you. I have a question. On your number two, what is your intention on depressing that? Do you want to have the garage lower? Was that your idea? Uh, yes, and also in keeping with the uh, homes on the same side of the street, which is on the east side of Veer Creek, if you notice, uh, I have some photos uh, that clearly depicts that characteristics for those homes. The house to the <coughs> left displays a slight depression uh, below street level, and several houses further on the same side of the street do the same. Try to well, is, get there, the is there north elevation correct? So they actually do have the, garage, the driveway sloping down? Is that correct? Do we think that's correct? I'm just wondering if they can actually slope it, if they're actually able to slope this. more or not. Yeah. This, uh, this is the front. Right, so that's the garage. That's a cut through the driveway then, right? This is uh, the driveway would be here, yes. This is the right. garage area. So I'm just wondering, are they actually able to slope the driveway anymore? A staff believe that that is possible. It still is possible. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, no more questions? Right. Uh, We've got the public works guy right here. Ask we have. <laughs> well, hopefully he says we have um, Marco Rambuia. 
Is it two L's? Beulah? I can't read the two L's or a U. Please state your name and address for the record. Absolutely. Thank you very much. For the record, my name is Marco Brambilla. My the address is 109 East Harbor in Glendale, California. I do believe that the staff made a very good presentation as such, and maybe it's not needed to belabor the point. Suffice it to say that throughout the project, we have worked very closely with the staff, listened to their comments and suggestions, and in fact, this generation of the plans that you're looking at does incorporate pretty much all the conditions that were addressed earlier on. For example, a question was raised about the parking. We have 18 feet of a setback, and we have provided, I mean, as, as opposed to the series that we were looking with the staff, in, within the 18 feet, we are sloping down, so the garage is being dropped down. The overall height of the building was reduced by two, two and a half feet by partly doing so and partly by reducing the parapet at the height, so by reducing the overall mass of that. So, so hopefully that is uh, in conformance with the uh, general guidelines. Please note that this project is, in fact, smaller than the average houses in the neighborhood. Its FAR is by far less than many other properties in the immediate vicinity, and it does comply fully with all zoning and building regulations, and we are not asking for any variances. As mentioned you know, previously, the design is fully consistent with other similar developments of this subdivision. It is consistent both with the letter and the spirit of the code and the guidelines for similar projects in the immediate area. Uh, by the way, it was mentioned, and by using high-quality materials, it will certainly be a valued addition to, to the general neighborhood because all the design and, and the materials chosen are quite the high end of the project. Uh, this project was developed by uh, for a family of long-time Glendale residents. This is not a speculation building. This is owner-occupied. And uh, for the project, it was necessary to obtain a conditional use permit for which uh, 15 of the close na neighbors expressed their support at the time. If you do need it, I do have a copy of those in hand, just in case you need those uh, for your files. And this is the same letter with different signatures of neighbors supporting the project. Having said so, we do not have any further uh, problems with the other conditions as uh, reflected by or as proposed by the staff. And were you to approve it, we certainly can work it out, the details and, and, and the fine-tuning of so the conditions. So you're okay with the reducing the height? Well, reducing height, we have already pretty much done that. Uh, we have 11 feet on the first floor. We have 9 feet on the second floor. We have not taken, we have not done yet the structural portion of that. So we have allocated, I think, a foot. So by the time you do the structural, probably the first floor is going to be about 10 feet. There is not much I cannot, de I cannot depress further it because it means that my entryway and my windows will be semi-subterranean. So that, that, that's, you know, at the point So we can go ahead and make this 10 feet and... I mean, I think I will end up by having 10 feet because I do not have the structure. So by the time I put the structure, you know, I probably will end up. And 10 feet is an ideal one because you have the drywall height, you're, you don't have, you know, the loss of that. So, but I do not have the structure. We have allocated 11 feet, so by the time we are done, probably we'll be closer to that anyway. When you say the garage is already depressed, you mean to say the, the condition number two is met already? It's already met. We met with the staff, and the garage is, in fact, now depressed. And we have, remember, we have 18 feet of setback, so the slope I can give is only within that 18 feet. Uh, I do not recall what the slope is. In my, I would imagine it's about 7 8 percent. But you can't go like really 15 percent because it means the, the transition of the car within the 18 feet, you will not be able really to go you know, into that. So maybe there is like a minimal playing room in that area, but there is not much more we can do because you have a setback of 18 feet and the slope must be within the 18 feet, so. I had two questions. Um, Absolutely. When you're proposing a, a style that's, that you're trying to be very authentic to, I think there's two, two aspects that really kind of stick out to me, and I wanted your opinion before I sure. comment on them. Do you think you handled the garage door and that whole portal properly? I mean, when you see the front facade, I mean, it seems like you've done three parts of the floor nicely, and then the garage door looks like that. Yeah, there's always a problem. In fact, one of the things, there are two, two answers to your question. Number one, because we were pro supposed to provide three card spaces. In fact, we have them, two of them, we have a tandem. What it does, it reduces the mass of the 
garage door itself. So it makes the garage door itself like you know, uh, smaller because otherwise you would have a three-car garage door. So that was one thing. The second thing is, uh, you know, unfortunately, these garage doors are basically manufactured, and they are not manufactured in the styles of the houses like you know you buy. And I'll be, you know, suggestion is. Well taken, and it does, you know, maybe... Uh, I'm just saying, if there's uh, another architectural feature you could put above it or... Yeah, something. maybe it can be some glazing in that, something like that. And I mean, again, the height of it, so that it competed more consistently. Well, remember, now I'm reducing the height of the garage by dropping it in, so proportionally... Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying, proportionally, it doesn't, it doesn't work at all. And I'm just wondering if there's something you do architecturally that would help... Mm. You know, the, the height of it in relation to the living room window. I mean, you're, you're proposing a house that has a very small... Yes, it is. You know, in, in, in reality, it is. Uh, by, by the fact that I have dropped now, I have an open space on the top of the garage, between the garage door and the seal of the balcony, which means I could incorporate in that area maybe some glazing and something to match the line of yeah, the living room exactly. window. In that, in that way, like, you know, it would be probably... Or I think... I think Mr. Zarifian is exactly pointing to that point. Yeah, that, that's certainly a possible. The second question would be, again, since you're proposing a house that's, that's trying to be you know, very authentic to its style, and you're not showing any, uh, any dividers on the windows or any kind of grid, and the grid really is part of that style. You know, the proportion that you do the grid of the window gives you a sense of the scale of the space. And I think it's, it's kind of odd that... None of the windows have any. Stickers. Actually, actually not. In fact, we did I mean, try the grid. trying to do a contemporary window on it. I think it's completely inappropriate. <laughs> so. You know, I mean, I, I'm not opposing to the grids, but actually we did try with, with grids. What it does, it breaks down to the, the, the surfaces into much smaller rectangular, like, you know, shapes. So it actually makes it look busier. So actually we started with that, and then we actually moved to a larger, larger yeah, panes. Yeah, but, but on those type of homes, you can do, you don't have to divide it up into so many pieces. A lot of times on that style home, it would be large panes, but there'd still, yeah, it be, needs to be, large, there'd still yeah. be a sense of it. I mean, you wouldn't have a single glaze. Well, there are there are those windows, as you recall, that they are like you know thinner on the top, thinner on the bottom, and then larger panes in the middle. That's certainly a possibility, if you if you recall yeah. what. I mean, yeah. you could do something different on the back. I know you have view and, okay. and whatnot on the back, but I think on the front, because you're trying to do, you know, such a historical style, I think it's you know not really consistent to do, to not do any kind of dividers on those. So. Okay. Anyway, those are which we certainly can incorporate, you know, a glazing or a line to to match the line of the, okay. you know, window, and then work on the windows. No problem. Any further questions from? No. Okay. Thank I you. Appreciate. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sergi Surugan, please come up and state your name and address for the record. Yeah, hello, my name is Sergi Surugan. And I'm the son of the owner, Marina Vetician. I just 2345 Montrose Avenue, number one, Montrose, California, 91020. I've been, I, I'm a pharmacist in the community. I used to have a pharmacy, La Cañada, Wisconsin Drugs. I work in North Hollywood now, so this has been my project since day one, probably since we came to LA from New York. We, we used to live in an apartment building. The first purchase my father ever made was to buy property, and people were buying houses. He had a dream house to build, as a view to look at a whole city, and he found it. He found it. He found this property, and he didn't want to live. He didn't want to get anything else, but he was very adamant about the whole you thing. So, we got this house. It's been about how many years now? Two years probably working on this. Going to see an architect, which is Marco and Caro. Had a great experience with them. Great people, and it's been two years, and we've been we've been very patient because there's so many rules and regulations nowadays. You got to follow all of them, and and today we're here, and I mean, I know this, this is what we wanted from day one, the design. We've been working on them very carefully, the committee, and, and the fact that you're looking at this case, I'm very thankful. I mean, I know it's been a long ride. But, I mean, when you look at the house compared to everybody else in the house, like my, my architect just recently said, it's one of the smaller houses probably in the area. Like before, when you look back 10, 15 years later, the house next to me is about 8,000 square feet. The same lot size, but at the time you guys didn't have the design review board. So, I mean, we do we did everything by codes and regulations. And if you look at our second floor, is about nine feet. Our, our, our height is about nine feet. So basically, I mean, condos have the same kind of high ceiling height, basically. So that's about it. I mean, I mean, I, I'm very thankful to be here, and I'll continue supporting you guys like I always have in the city of Glendale and the whole community. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Kathy Wong. Please come up and state your name and address. My name is Kathy Wong. I live uh, at 3323 Deer Creek Lane, uh, which is directly across adjacent to that to that lot. Uh, my concern is the height. I think uh, when I bought when I bought the land and built a house 23 years ago, uh, everyone has a height limit, and everybody, I believe, follows it. And I believe this time, this new house, they're building at least, the way I look at how they frame it, at least seven feet taller than, than other houses. I'm not sure. That the, I, I guess that the presentation did talk about their reduction of heights today, but I still feel that they may be a few feet taller than it's. Um, it's a sign, so I um, I want to be here to oppose it because it's obs obstructing my view, <laughs> and um, and also I, I feel that it will uh, my value of the house will be affected. I have a letter also from the co-owner of my house, so I don't know to oppose this. So take it all. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Do you guys want to go um, I have representative of Jasmine Kazanian. Is the person's name <laughs> or a representative? Or I, I just have representative of Jasmine Kazanian. Actually, um, Jasmine no. was supposed to come last week, but this week from right. New York. So Sorry, she gave me a letter, and I just I'm just going to do. I have a letter. Not from Jasmine. Okay. You, you can read the letter, or we can. We, we won't read it out loud. If you want to read it to present it, that would be best. Okay. Dear board members, we are the homeowners of 3334 Deer Creek Lane, Glendale, California. We were planning on attending the public hearing originally scheduled for February 28, 2013 for the proposed construction on the property located at 3338 Deer Creek Lane to express our objection to the proposed dimensions of the project. Unfortunately, the rescheduling of the hearing conflicts with our schedule as we will out of town on March 7, 2013. Please accept this letter on our behalf as our direct viewpoint. We feel strongly that the proposed project reference uh, above being built at the proposed height will disrupt the aesthetics uh, of our street as well as block our uh, northerly views. We ask the, that the design and review board of the City of Glendale Department of Planning reconsider the proposed height limit as it will not conform and blend in well with our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, uh, David Hartunian, please come up and state your name and address for the record. No. Okay. Yeah, I can put you for So, uh, Joe Ivasi. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Joe Ivasi. I've lived in Glendale almost 50 years, and I just came from downtown. A little while ago, I was conduct hearings, and felt like you guys, I have only three members on my board to <clears throat> reduce uh, pr property owners' taxes they can prove to us. I've submitted a uh, um, plot map. I hope they have not given it to you yet. No. <clears throat> okay, please give the plot maps. There are three of them. Five, I don't remember. Is that the one? Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some more. We, we just found this on the desk when we sat down. We didn't know where it came from. Oh, these are all for us? Okay. Yeah, we'll put one up. Okay. This, this plot map, what it is, the original uh, uh, people who really own the property and uh, were designing to do and their proposal was higher building, larger buildings, and the city did not accept it. This went on for months and months. Finally, they submitted the plot map that you have in there, and it shows the heights of all the residential buildings on that street, which is a dead-end street, which is a dead-end street, and the neighbors have really no objections. In fact, they're hoping somebody will build a house there. The only thing they're looking forward to, 
to not to not to damage it to the appearance of the neighborhood because I think almost all the all the houses in there are within 17 17 feet maybe it's with some exception because which this lot is you know it's going down and they're across street where property is going uphill you know but still the the their their heights are really really limited then all the neighbors want to keep their neighborhood the way it is they don't want to change it so that's all we that's all that's all we expect and I've been involved with commercial buildings and residential buildings in the city for many many years and one time I had a year's right to re, to to build a commercial building between from Wilson to Broadway that commercial building for a year I had, every six months I had to pay fifty thousand dollars to city in order to continue that project but regardless the most important thing is to keep the integrity of the neighborhood a small dead end street that's all the neighbors want to keep the integrity of the, the especially the height oh I had I'm sorry. Are you I just got in it. favor of the project, or you're opposing it because of the height? <laughs> the only thing is opposing the heights. Okay, thank you. I'm opposing the height. In fact, this property is a 3341B Street Lane. The gentleman put the house for sale, and and uh, somebody tied with him. But my brother tied with him. My brother lives almost across the street, and he said, "What are you selling your house?" He says, "These people build the house. You know the height they want to build." I'm going to lose the value of my property. And he said, doctor, he said, I'm going to sell it now before the house is built and I'll lose the, the value of my property. Again, I just want to repeat myself. Then the people who live in this, in this street, they really have no objection to build the house as long as they keep the integrity of the neighborhood. That's all. Great. I think that's a reasonable request and I hope you will consider it. Okay. And it's very important. It's really important, <coughs> and most of the heights are 17 feet, and their proposal is about what 20 some odd feet in the front, 30 some odd, 35 feet in the back. You know, if it's 35 feet, if it doesn't go down slope, it's going to really block the views of at least four people who live across the street, and that's that's not acceptable. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Any questions? I'd be more than happy to answer. Don't think we have any. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Very clear. Okay. Uh, David Hartunian, please come up and state your name and address for the record. I actually live on 522 North Jackson, but my relatives live across the street at 3335 Deer Creek Lane. Uh, Dave Hartunian, 40-year resident in Glendale. Grew up here when there's no gallery or nothing, but I uh, wanted to go through some, some things. I, I'm basically going to read a letter first regarding the representation of uh, the neighbors in the immediate area around the project. So uh, I'll go through this quickly. It says, uh, we are the owners of the homes located at uh, uh, around 3338 Deer Creek Lane. We are writing this letter in opposition to the issuance of a proposed construction permit for the property located at 333 Deer Creek Lane, Glendale, California, specifically with respect to the proposed height of the project. Attendees of the CP hearing uh, last year for the above reference project in which the applicant had submitted an application to construct a two-story single-family residence on the current lot uh, opposed the project. Um, our main concern is the structure and at the proposed height of almost 23, I think he said it was 23.9 feet, but uh, it, we just believe it will not be in, uh, compatible with the initial and original requirements of the developer, which I actually did bring in. Uh, plan. Can, you, can you just please talk into the microphone? <laughs> you can carry it with you. We just can't. I don't, I don't want to yeah. carry it, but I think it's the same plan over there as you guys had. But uh, it's basically showing the original development and uh, all the homes on the side of the street for the reference project uh, don't exceed a height. I think it's about 16 feet on that end of the street. Um, and I saw, so I'll leave this as a reference for the track map, but uh, the proposed height is to be almost 24 feet, which is pretty much incompatible by 7 to 8 feet of the residences on, on that side of the street. 
uh, when when the owners originally purchased these lots uh, when they were the original construction was happening I think in 1988 uh, they all follow the guidelines of the original developer and the specifications provided by the city of Glendale. So uh, basically, you know, everyone's fallen in line with a kind of uh, coherence to the neighborhood. And uh, we, we want to add that the proposed project will block the view of not only the homes across the street from the property, but of the homes to the immediate right and left of the structure. So we always believe, uh, we also believe that the proposed design will impact the views in the homes to the immediate right and left of the proposed project. Uh, just to summarize the points, the height, of course, we feel is uh, inappropriate, and we also feel like uh, the, the design of the home has a somewhat of a boxy appearance and s seems to maybe need a little bit more articulation of design. Uh, so we strongly ob object to the proposed project design during the initial, initial CUP hearing, and uh, again, we stand to object now. And uh, I, I know that the original uh, architect made a reference that he had obtained somewhat, so many approvals regarding the other homeowners, but I'm curious as to what he, when that was done actually, and if the specifications of the home were also included as to the proposed project. Um, so we would just basically like the applicant to revisit the homes on the Deer Creek Lane area again and just kind of walk it to better understand how the current homes are set up and utilized the sloping grade and I just don't feel like the sloping grade on this project is even even remotely close to the grade of the 3334 which is immediately to the south of the property so I, I'm, the driveways will be contrasting in the sloping grade. I need to cut you off because your time is up but I have a okay. question for you. You yeah. prepared this document? The, the height study document, you were part of the study, it, the people that put together? It's a reference document, a reference. yeah. The, the, the home that you've marked out, which is on this property line, is 28 feet above and directly behind curb. The adjacent properties are 26, 27, 28, 26. I think those are on the opposite side of the street. According to this, it's on the same side of the street. The opposite side. It's on the opposite side you're looking at. The down slope ones are on the I have this 102, 103, and then the property is 104. I think the property is 118. The property is 118. Am I back The one across the street. They colored this one. Because this is the map. I'm backwards. I'm sorry. Okay. 16, 17. So 1617 is 16 feet, 16 feet. I have. So you're saying that originally this, the property was at 16 feet. Uh, turn it around. Turn it around, the around to the, show the camera. <laughs> Sorry. I'll flip it this way too because it's going to get confusing. Flip you it could, around. yeah. You got it upside down. You have it upside down. That's why I'm confused. As well. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe you can show it right from there. Actually. I actually brought us. Why don't you go ahead and? Yeah. Well, the, the problem I have with this document is unless that it unless it, this is a covenant on the property. It would be enforceable by the homeowner association. This bears no resemblance to anything. And then the, the covenant. I appreciate it's, there is a covenant that they've expired. It's they expired. Expire. Okay, so the, I appreciate you know that this is there, but it, this has no bearing on what I'm, we're sitting. I'm on. just presenting okay. the original plan yeah. as it was developed by the original developer. Yeah. So. Okay, I, I think I understand the plan now. <laughs> so I had it backwards. Thank and you. I actually brought some reference pictures regarding. I, I know my time is up, but I'm going to give you guys this book. It references the pictures. I don't know if everyone's been to this site or what have you, but this is for the board showing the clearance height of the, the homes and the homes right next to it. So I left the CD there with pictures. If the board would be interested, staff has prepared some research looking at several houses that were approved, and we've taken the heights of those houses. Um, all of these are 1990s and 2001 approvals, um, but I could read those to you if you'd like. Yeah, sure. I would like yeah. to. Um, uh, on the south side of the street, there are three properties. I'll, I'll just read the front, the street front heights. Obviously, the rear heights are going to be higher. Um, 21 and a half at 3330 Deer Creek, 22 feet at 3322, 21 feet 3 inches at 3304. And just reference 30, it with the photos. We won't, you, and we won't read the I'm northern. Lost. I don't think <laughs> the can northern. You, can, you, can you go down? I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So 3330 okay. is 21.5. The front twenty eight six at the rear. Okay. Thirty three twenty two. Thirty three. Thirty two. You said. You can 33, sit 22. Thank you. Twenty two. Okay. Is twenty two at the front, twenty three at the rear. 
Those are both 1999 approvals, if that helps. No, actually, I actually have a reference document from the papers that signed off on the opposition as well. 3304 is 213 at the front, and we don't have a rear height. We don't have that photo. 33, yeah, we don't have that one. That might be too far down the block. The rest of them are what they say. No, we didn't do research on every house. These were just recent approvals, or somewhat recent. Are you submitting? Okay, thank you. Okay, those are all the speaker cards I have. No, we've spoken. I'm sorry. And I'm going to close the public hearing, because that's all the speaker cards I have, unless someone wants to. Okay, so we just want a rebuttal from the architect. Applicant, sorry. I don't have a gavel. Two minutes will suffice. Pictures? Pictures. Oh, sorry. Sorry, we're like too much paper here. I'm hugging all the pictures here. Oops, sorry. Okay, please proceed. Thank you. Once again, my name is Marco Brambilla, and I would like to emphasize that in working with the staff, we have certainly been extremely sensitive to the integrity of the neighborhood. In fact, the average houses in the area are 5,000 feet. We're proposing 3,500 feet. The average FAR is 63. We're proposing 45%. All the properties in that area are two stories. Some of them were developed by a CCNR that expired three, four years ago. And, in fact, if you look, it's absolutely impossible to be the 16 feet height of a two-story building. I mean, even if you build an 8 and 8, I mean, you still have all those properties have pitch roof, which overall exceeds that. So the bottom line, I think the staff very clearly indicated, the properties that have been, you know, on that area and the story poles that we pulled really prove that are varying between 21 and 24 feet in the front and between 26 and 32, 33 in the back. And this is very typical, and we're right in the middle of that. In fact, when we were doing the actual story poles, you could see that, and we reduced that by my two minutes are up. Okay. And the one allegation was made about the slope of the property. Please note it is done by a licensed surveyor, and it is extremely accurate, and it's reflecting exactly what it is. One more thing, as Mr. Gigos mentioned, I was just reminded that the original submittal actually did incorporate windows with grids. The staffs originally, if you recall that, you know, that version at one point, we did have that, and the staff reference was actually maybe we should take them out, and so that Lycan would be happy to put them back if the staff so wishes. And I think with that, I did answer the issue of the sensitivity that we approached in designing the project. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any questions? No. I think we have a lot of reading material up here now. I don't know if you want to close the public session. If you guys want to take a moment to look at all the material, or if you want to go right into your comments. I'll go right into the comments. Okay. We'll keep looking. It's always difficult when you have a new structure going in where there's been other buildings that have been done previously with different sensibilities. I think it's hard to, well, let me just say this. There's one thing to keep in mind. You have a sloped subdivision. So consequently, you're going to have things differently on one side of the street than the other because one side is upslope, one side is downslope. And the way the building height is determined or calculated in Glendale is from where the lowest part of the building comes out of the ground. So consequently, if somebody tries to do a very deep building, like the one next door, and it's a very deep building, it means it's going further down the hill, which means that they need to limit the size of their house because they're doing a much bigger house. So consequently, because this house is smaller, it's pulled up, which means that its low point, its starting point is higher, which means the building can be higher. So I will recommend, I don't know if the rest of the board members go along with it, I don't think they need to have an 11-foot ceiling height downstairs because I think it's having successive problems through the height. But in reality, it's hard to do a building that's not very close to that height if you had a parapet on a flat roof. So from that standpoint, I think it's difficult 
to um, you know the deny the project. Uh, the other thing is the the map, while nice, isn't really relevant to what we're talking about tonight, and I don't think it's appropriate to uh, to use it uh, for this project. I mean, because in reality, it's a CCNR issue, not a city issue. Uh, this isn't bound by our requirements uh, from the city standpoint, um, or what we would look at from that. That being said, I think there are some issues for this building. I mean, it's trying to be a, uh, a very traditional building and using all the detailing of the traditional building. And I think it's doing some stuff inappropriate if you're trying to do that. You know, it's not a contemporary version of this older style. It's trying to be the older style. And I think when you do that, you take on the responsibility, more responsibility than you might another have. So. I do have a problem with the windows. I think they're inappropriate. I do have a problem with the garage door and the way that portal is done. Uh, because they've made the decision that the garage is going to be part of that front facade. And when you make that decision, it needs to stand up and be as presentable as the other porthole openings. So those two aspects. There's another couple of things. When you go around the side, I mean, maybe it's not as visible because of, you know, the way the other buildings are next to it. But because the one building is sort of smaller down to the side, you're going to see some kind of odd detailings, which I think are kind of strange, how the parapet and levers pass the building on the north elevation, those kind of weird things that might be appropriate in a more modern building but seem, you know, oddly inappropriate on this building. So the way those the balconies jut out without uh, orbels or something under them, supporting them, again, within the style, you know, or the way that parapet... Uh, on the right-hand side, upper right-hand side, on the east elevation, upper right-hand corner. You know, it's it's trying to be a consistent parapet when the building's not consistent. So it's just there's things like that which I think are inappropriate and don't really become, help the style that it's trying to be. And I think it's possibly that the front entry, as staff noted, could lower. Possibly, I think it's it's pushing up to that detail window on the top, sort of inappropriately. So. Um, those are my comments. Um, yeah, exactly. I just think there's a lot of things. That, what I'm saying is if you're trying to do the historical building, you've taken on the responsibility of making it be that. So, And when you try to do that and you do it poorly, it makes the building look, you know, doubly bad <laughs> and inappropriate. So, you know, if, you're, if you want it to be that, it needs to be that. And there are ways of doing the dividers on the window that doesn't have to be all chopped up like you think. An English divider, a lot of French buildings like that might be just a three light, you know, but there would be some kind of division in the window. It doesn't have to be 20 lights, you know, like you would think of some English building. It's not. If you check any of the sort of French or Italian, it would be like that. So those are my comments. Okay. Very good. Alan? I can be. I can be next. Okay. I, I completely agree with everything that <laughs> you're saying. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean it could be it could be it. I, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I understand the concerns of the neighbors. Um, um, you know, when I looked first looked at the building, uh, this is not something that I I would personally be able to connect because of some of the reasons that. Uh, board member Gerico said, uh, and also it's, it's a kind of a f foreign uh, language and style that I would pursue. But that's that's because of my own personal um, inability to be able to connect quickly to the to the building. But one thing that is really important, and Mr. Gerico said it very clearly, is that if you're doing a, a classical building, it if it's not totally classical, then all those um, in classical things will be n not to your favor. And I think the building has a very simple plan that comes through on the front elevation. It's very interesting. However, I will support uh, reducing the height a little bit and um, uh, make sure that all of those issues that have to do with making it a, a very simple classical building is met. And that's, that's basically what I have to say for the building. Well, um, in Glendale, probably 
the only place you can get away with this type of a style of design is the area that they're proposing. So, yeah, that's so that that, that I have to I have to commend them that they've they've been daring enough to propose such a style. Um, there's it's not setting a precedent. So as far as the character um, and the style of the architecture, I don't have any problem with. Um, there are several things that Mr. Garagos mentioned that um, it's been lost in the design, and I think symmetry and equal, creating an equal balance in the facade is very important in this type of architecture. Um, what they've done is um, it's fairly interesting, actually, on the on the north elevation to step that back. But what what happened um, on the on the um, South elevation, then you have this tall, uh, flat um, elevation that they've essentially recessed in the center, um, or or not even recessed, but they've created some element there. So I think there's the opportunity there that either um, match the south side to the north side, or match the north side to the south side to kind of create that. As far as the height. Um, it's been designed as a building that it can be basically taken off of this land and placed on a flat ground. And we are in a hillside and we are in a slope um, environment. Um, yes, there are higher, higher buildings. Um, as Mr. Plack mentioned, that some of these homes, and I'm not sure what means it was used by the neighbors to measure these houses. Um, I'm not um, denying or I'm not agreeing on those, but they are they are there. I mean, you can physically see these buildings. Um, but there is the opportunity to lower the building. It is a brand new building. And um, by reducing the, the first floor to 10 feet, as architect agreed, that will definitely reduce the height. Also, it's, it's being constructed on a raised um, crawl space, I mean, raised platform. It's not, it's not really being designed and, um, uh, based on what you would find on a hillside. So looking at that, there are no site conditions that will prohibit them by lowering that. And there are several things with the design, actually. On the, on the, uh, when, you, when you start looking at the north and the south elevation, the entire back landing and the circular stair is missing from the elevations. So that itself is going to be a substantial mass that is going to come and uh, attach to the side of that. So in the side profile, you're going to see that. At the same time, they have a very limited backyard. By lowering that, then the steps get reduced. Therefore, the backyard gets a little bit bigger. So I think, I think lowering that would definitely help. Um, the reason that I think staff has um, kind of got confused is I, I got confused as well when, when the architect was saying that the garage is stepped. You can actually understand what he's saying because the drawings are not drawn properly. But the elevations on the floor plan, you can see that there's a six inch depression on the garage level, and the section is not depicted accordingly. So, um, lowering the garage, uh, I don't think it's going to really help, but what it's going to do is it's going to increase the mass above the garage. And so, so <coughs> not creating steps on the second <coughs> floor, so the whole thing has to kind of come down. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was our goal to bring to bring. Yeah, the, so the whole, whole thing should, should proportionally. So the, if the garage the is getting lower, garage, yeah. then then the building should get lower. Yeah. And I don't think it's going to hurt the design. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. I mean, they're literally, um, you know, treating the the section of this building as they would treat it as a, as it was sitting, uh, you know, flat on a flat ground, as I mentioned before. So by lowering this, they already have a condition that it's the, from the street sidewalk, it's sloping back against the building. So they are, they're already going to have this condition of waterproofing and drainage and some landscaping, some, some stuff. So by lowering that, it's still, you're still going to have the same effect. Uh, they're lucky that the next door neighbor is fairly similar. But uh, I completely agree. I think the details, the, the, the key is in the details. There's the corbels are missing. There, there's these thin cantilevers that are not really supposed to be there. You know, some conditions like these doesn't make sense. You know, something like this you won't see in this type of style of architecture. You know, things like this. So there's a lot of elements there that you know either make it a box. You know, just be done with it. Just, <coughs> you know, I think that would that would make this architecture better. 
you know, you have a heavier solid box at the bottom, smaller plastered, you know, element at the top, which is, you know, the, you know, set back from the, the lower level. But as, as staff mentioned, I think the details are going to be very important. Some of the, some of the, um, I think, did, did you, did you call out any kind of a, um, cornices, coins, and other balusters, and other things that are, uh, that are missing from this style. I think it's very simple in, in a sense. It's just, you know, it's trying, but it's not there yet. So. Well, first off, let me say uh, thank you to whoever produced these pictures. It made some things clear for me, and I'll, and I'll address, I guess, some of the pictures later on. But as a start, uh, I do agree with the uh, staff's recommendation, recommendations uh, without adding any more restrictions. Uh, and the reason for that is these pictures uh, prove to me that although I'm a proponent of maintaining neighborhood character, I don't see any specific character in this neighborhood. There are homes here that, as it was alleged or stated, uh, regarding this project, they are boxy. There are homes here that look like mansions. Uh, so there is no specific character uh, uh, that we can focus on and say the majority of the homes need to look like this. And as staff indicated, the heights in recent years have been much different than, than the design here that was presented, whether applicable or not. Uh, so I can understand and I cannot accept that we uh, should be, again, looking at these pictures, looking at these samples, uh, we should be imposing more restrictions than, uh, than the staff has made recommendations already. So I'm satisfied with the staff recommendations. Okay. Um, at first glance, when I saw the project, of course, I thought, this in Glendale doesn't really make sense. But like you mentioned, <laughs> I saw the, the, the site photos, and immediately I thought, oh, okay, this does make sense, because the property you picked, in this case, does fit the context. And we're usually up here saying, well, this doesn't fit the context. And I think in this case, the style you picked does fit the context, in the sense of, like you said, there is no one specific style. It's, it's a more contemporary co uh, collection of homes. So in that sense, I thought, okay, I can see where this, where this works. Um, but I was concerned about the height from the appearance of the building, and then also I wanted to go check out the story um, story poles. So I did that, and I I do feel that the the mass that you've presented with the building that you've created uh, will become it's it's um, a very present a very noticeable presence in that area because it's a boxy shape, because it's a little taller. So you add all these elements together, and it creates something that sticks out like a, like a sort of thumb, so then now it doesn't blend in with the context anymore. Uh, maybe your style is blending in, but the shape and the details and everything else that you're trying to put together on this building, in my mind, don't really blend in with the remaining, the houses that are near you, around you. So um, after looking at it even further and trying to figure out why was that an, a feeling that I had when I looked at the story poles and this, and this, and this um, elevations, I, again, I think that a lot of the details and a lot of the little uh, mass elements that you've put together on the building, like my colleagues have mentioned, they're, they're not quite worked out yet. And I think once you get that to a point where it's worked out, um, it will make more sense to everybody who looks at the project. Um, I have a problem with having to, taking, taking a beautiful site like this where you're, again, mentioning that the view is one of the most important things and the reason why they bought the property in the first place, and putting tiny windows in the back, um, you know, not even really addressing. The, the, there are windows to the view, but I'm thinking that if you want to celebrate the view, that that should be more about opening up the house to the view. This feels like a box with windows that just sort of create little views, and I feel like you've missed an opportunity to create more, um, a more breathtaking space for the inhabitants. I'm sorry, it's just how I feel. <laughs> and also I think that to Mr. Malikin's point about you, you kept it on a plinth, this house doesn't really um, feel as if it's part of the hillside. It feels like you just, like you said, dropped this house down. And I think that if you, you know, it really does want to become, we, we stress being part of the hillside and the hillside guidelines. Um, this doesn't feel like it's part of the hillside. It does feel like it's all on one level, and then you have this massive staircase in the back, and you've kind of like truncated your, your uh, rear 
patio space by putting this giant staircase. And when you could take the staircase away and maybe address it from the side, you can have it accessible from the bottom level, which could be your main level that just goes straight out into the patio space. So, you know, that could be, it's usually, we see that a lot in contemporary homes on hillsides in Malibu, for instance. But, you know, you could take a style like this, which is kind of a contemporary, classically done style, and use more of an openness to it with the elements of a classically designed home and the elements of doing symmetry and balance, like you mentioned. So the more I look at the home, the more problems I have with it. Like I said, I think the style you picked is fine for the neighborhood. The height, I think you're not too far off from where it needs to be. And I appreciate that all the neighbors came out and expressed their opinions because that's kind of why we're here. So I do have a lot of issues with the home as it's designed. You know, even for me, I mean, personally, the layout of the spaces on the interior, it doesn't feel like a home that I would want to inhabit, I'm sorry to say, because the flow to me and the way that you frame the views, it's just not there for this property. I mean, it's great for another location, but for the property that you have, which is a stunning piece of land, I feel that it should just address that better. Just one more thing. I think Mr. Geragos touched upon it very briefly, but the garage and the dividing lights are going to be important. So if we're going to put that on the notes, I want to make sure that we have that as a question. Also, consistency in the windows, you know, you've got the double hung, and then you've got the casement, and then you've got the sliders. So it's a combination of all kinds. So I think a consistent approach to all the windows would be an ideal situation there. Does anyone else want to add anything? No, I think the two comments. One is how does the building connect to the topography of the site, and how the views are really celebrated are very important comments that can help the building. I have one quick question, and I don't know if it's a question for just no answer needed, but on the south elevation, you know, that recessed area that you have the balusters there, you would think it's a balcony, but it's not an accessible area. So I'm not sure really what that's doing. You know, it's just a baluster, and then, you know, it's about a foot wide. There's sliding windows that are, you know, I think it's an interesting detail. You know, it gives some interest to that, but unfortunately it's an unusable space. So all it's going to do is collect dirt, and you can't even access it. So I'm not really sure if the intent is fine, but I think what it's going to do is may become a problem. So just a thought. I almost feel like this house is designed for paper, but it's not actually designed to live in. Like if I were to live in the house, I'd have, like you said, issues with how would you maintain that area, or how would you? I'm not going to comment on the interior because it's not in our preview to comment on it, but on the exterior part of it, I'm just mostly commenting on the exterior. Well, I feel the interior could dictate how the exterior gets broken apart or metrically put back together again. I'm not opposed to it being asymmetrical because I think a lot of the homes in the area that do have this sort of style element are asymmetrical, and that's kind of more interesting. For instance, the house next door is asymmetrical. It's got interesting elements. Yeah, but when you look at the front elevation, you know, everything is cut in the center. So you have the same identical windows on either side. It's trying to be symmetrical. It's trying to be symmetrical, but it's not. And so there's a lot of these. So if it's not, then let's not make it symmetrical, and, you know, asymmetrical would be fine. But pick and choose, which is it? Which is it? Symmetrical or asymmetrical? I think that the rendering actually very graphically depicts how the bottom feels really heavy and massive, and the top feels kind of small for some reason. It looks like the balconies and the balustrades take up a lot of space and create this boat feel to it, where, like, maybe that's the bottom of the boat and the top of the boat is your little rooms. The structure is going to be much taller than the adjacent properties. 
speaking, that was the actual. It's just a mass here. And how the garage door obviously looks out of proportion because there's a lot of header above it because it's sunk down. And then the front entry, which looks massive in these on this elevation because it's the top part of the elevation is is pushing into the detail window, which I think is a lovely window. But how do you re reduce that without getting into the balustrade ends? And then if you reduce the whole, take the whole thing away and just create an arch, which is kind of nice, I think that would work. But then what do you do for the roof? So it's all these little problems that could be resolved if it just got maybe more integrated. The solution is very simple, but unfortunately the approach that they've taken to kind of build it on grade rather than in grade, in grade. that's what it's hurting them. Yeah. So I think it definitely they can get what they want, but I think it needs to be incorporated. Well, I think they can get what they want. I hope they do. We have to review the, the comments. Yeah. Can we read the comments? And I'll make a motion. We're ready for staff to read back our comments. <laughs> We're flipping a coin. Um, uh, I'm going to go down uh, based on the order. I, we heard them from the commissioners, and as things get repeated, we'll assume that those are conditions that everyone agrees with. Um, starting with reduction, kind of a, a refinement of condition one from the staff conditions to bring the first floor floor to ceiling height to 10 feet instead of 11. Um, to introduce grids at the windows, which would be simulated divided light grids on the outside of the f outside face of the glass, perhaps introducing horizontal lines to kind of reflect some of the horizontality of the uh, stone surface. At the garage door, um, possible options to deal with the excessive head height would be either raising the height of the garage door possibly or introducing a, a cornice element or some other architectural feature. Um, that would reduce that apparent sense of height above it. Um, the balconies at the south elevation at the rear that show the cantilever introduce either uh, corbels. Um, one thought that I had would be that the board could consider if we are, if one of the conditions is also to sink the house down lower into the ground, perhaps that first floor facade could be brought out underneath the uh, area that's cantilevered without affecting mm -hmm. the, the, the height in any serious way. Um, intro, or at the second floor where the cornice kind of cantilevers away from the wall to bring that back, even if it means that there's a slight asymmetry on that facade. Um, the board... Or move the building or the move the exterior wall out the wall and get out. rid of the balusters. I think that this is more of an example of an issue that was created by this design, not that they specifically want that to be it. No, I, I, I mean, it just, I, I don't and want And in, in, our, in our staff review, we had a lot of issues trying to kind of break up the second floor, and one of the ways that we thought was successful was then they did start introducing a more consistent baluster line, but that raises other issues, um, obviously. Yeah, I think you've split the building in half now. Um, the board appeared to agree with staff condition number three that the front entry be lowered, the entry arch and surround be lowered to allow that uh, accent window to be revealed. Um, floor heights. Um, Board member Malikian supported lowering the house further into the ground, and I think there was other board support for that. I'm not sure how far down that could go, and the, I guess the, the limiting factor would be the slope of the driveway, ultimately. Well, to follow the topography of the site, like in the back area, you could drop the building down. And actually, the it's the of the well, you have 18 yeah. foot of distance, and you need to have you need to meet the required code requirement well, for of the slope. garage. I mean, the rest of the house could be at different yeah, levels. But, it's, it's, yeah. but then you start like, creating these shifts have a in the split level elevation, house. the split do. levels. You know, do I, I don't think uh, entering uh, in a building at you know going down is a nice experience. Yeah. You know, some of these buildings, when they they've lowered the building from the the walk, uh, the sidewalk, it looks like the building sunk into the ground. So what is your solution? Which is, um, so I'm saying that is one thing about um, um, there might be other ways to to gain height as you go down the, mm -hmm. the slope, rather than putting the height 
into the building. everything. Yeah, yeah. start yeah. low and then and then gain height as you go down. Maybe that more board discussion. Oh, in, in, section, in section, you you step down as you go. So so some of your higher spaces are further into the right to the side. Rather than you could, so you so could you mean you're saying that step the entire building so you have a lower elevations in the front and then the higher elevations in the back is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, so so the so the second story can shoot straight out and then the ground floor maybe it's it's in two levels. Split level. Split level. Or you're going down. Or something in that Yeah, yeah I, under I understand. I, I think maybe the board can discuss that yeah. aspect a little more. Well, I just wanted to bring it up to the board because I think some of the buildings in the neighborhood, if, when I look at them, it feels like it's it's the buildings so if were, were built uh, higher up and then they suck. Or two. Yeah. Well, I do, but I don't. I want to see. Well, I don't want to do it so people can't see. Um, so what you're saying is, don't lower this. Keep you, this you, where you, it you, is, but then step it down like so this. What I'm saying is that you can you can in section instead of having 11 feet to start with, you, maybe you can play with this to to. Reduce this, but, that, uh, but this is but this the is the front. But, yeah, I know. But but you start reducing the overall height. Okay. But don't don't push the building down and come down. To you you okay. st start doing this. This this floor won't should slide but out at all. Problem, uh, yeah. But problem is that they could do it. This is getting low. So here. if they can lower it, is their bedroom is there? You can see. Yeah, I, I think I think you can lower it, but by how many feet? But I think there's definitely room to lower lower the entire elevation than the feet, yeah. lowering that foot, and so. Yeah, I, I think probably you, you you could do a little bit of both and find yeah. the right one. What I'm saying is that don't push the building down to the point that it feels like right. it's it's sunken. Sunken. You start to look down into the entering. So uh, so if we have as a condition the the building and garage should be depressed lower than proposed in a manner that won't create a sunken appearance but could allow the building to follow the topography yeah, in a exactly, more sensitive exactly. way. Perfect. So, well did said. anyone write that down? Well said, yeah. It's on, it's on recorded. Yeah, you can, be, you can play it back. <laughs> Everything we say. Um, going back to uh, Board Member Malikian's comments, and this sounded more like a condition about the recess at the south elevation that you thought might be a dirt or a, a problem there. Um, so perhaps we could add a consideration to reconsider that aspect of the design, unless you want it to be a condition. Oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. okay. And uh, you also mentioned uh, that we should develop a consistent window operation, whether it's all casements yeah. or as close as we can. Um, board member Kriglian supported staff recommendations, and Chair Sakai. Um, also address the issue with the rear with the rear elevation and following the topography that I think we've addressed, and also asked for larger windows at the rear elevation to enhance uh, views from the inside. I mean that's just a concern. Well, the, the, the problem is that if we systematically come in and say let's large, you know increase the window size and, and let's do this, I think they need to look at the overall right. design. And I think there is the opportunity we're saying, you know, if they want the view, it doesn't look like they're getting the view with the windows that they have. So I think they need to look at the entire project so we, as we can an overall perhaps have a condition to, to Gain greater consistency in window uh, size placement and operation type, which could lead to larger windows at the rear. Since I mean, it's, a, it's a suggestion to mm -hmm. say that to me, when I'm looking at this project, it doesn't appear that the view is that important by looking at it. And if that's importance to them, they might want to consider okay, enlarging so the windows or making more of them, you know, something that provides more view. Okay, I, I think. Yeah, we'll make that a consideration yeah. if the board agrees. The symmetry of the building, whether it's important to have the entire building symmetrical or asymmetrical and not mixing the two. Right. Is that a consideration or? I think it goes back to the overall design of the project. Well, yeah, yeah, I wasn't we, sure we there was agreement on that. I can't been. really say, but it just pick and choose. You know, if, if they're creating that, then 
you know, they have to be careful because this, are, this style of architecture doesn't allow you to have cantilevers without corbels and other details. You just very thin cantilevers. It's not normal in this type of style of architecture. Anything else that we missed? Oh, I'll move to return for redesign. Second. Who, I'm sorry, uh, which board? Second. Second. First and second. So I have a motion by Mr. Malekian for the project to come back as a return for redesign with the considerations and condition that we heard. <coughs> Uh, this will be roll call. Mr. Kroglin? No. Mr. Gargos? Yes. Mr. Malekian? Yes. Mr. Serifian? Yes. And Chair Sakai? Yes. Motion passes 4 1. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Two minute, two minute recess. <laughs> So the next case is two. Oh, not yet. Sorry. Not yet. When recess oh. goes away. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. I saw us, but there we go. <coughs> okay, so the next case is going to be 2 PDR 1301725A at 2064 Buckingham Place. Yes, Chair That's Sakai, yours. board members. <laughs> this is the applicant and the plans are located directly behind you for the project located at 2064 Buckingham Place. The project consists of adding 252 square feet on the first floor of an existing 2,100 square foot single family, single story home and adding a new 1,120 square foot second story addition for a total square footage of 3,383 square feet. The existing two car garage is proposed to be expanded to provide the minimum 20 by 20 interior. There will, the pool that is currently existing in the rear will be maintained and a new deck is proposed at the rear. Uh, the proposed addition and remodel will alter the architectural style from what is now just a simple ranch, one story structure to a more modern style house. The property itself right now is an irregularly shaped hillside lot, approximately 30,000 square feet. It is dual frontage. It has a flag lot, and if you'd allow me to move up to the map. It's a dual frontage lot. It has a flag lot off of Buckingham Place. There's an existing flat building pad featuring the single family home. And then there is a very steep rear yard leading down to Chevy Chase Drive. So it is dual frontage off of a flag lot. The case is a brand new case reviewed first time for final review. The project, or I should say the site, previously had a proposal back in 2008. And at that point in time, the project for a two-story, um, much larger scale project was approved by the Design Review Board, appealed by the adjacent property owner, and it went on appeal to the City Council. The City Council at that point in time denied the previous proposal essentially on three grounds. And I included that just for your information in your staff report. I included the motion from City Council that specifically addressed the fact that they didn't feel that it, the previous proposal, and I do have that up here on this, on the board right here, that the previous proposal was incompatible in terms of mass and scale. Um, it was architecturally incompatible with the surrounding ranch style homes and that the project itself had conflicting relationships with the adjacent building in terms of natural light and ventilation. The property owner has returned, has retained a new architect, is proposing a brand new project. This particular project tried to address the previous city council's concerns regarding mass and scale by reducing the overall square footage, 700 square feet, and also reducing the conflicting relationships to the adjacent structure by um, 
making the second story addition much smaller and then relocating it away from the adjacent property owner to the westerly side of the building and you'll notice here previously the second story essentially spanned the entire first floor and now and as I'll go into my staff report later on the second story footprint has been reduced and then pushed away from the adjacent property owner over the westerly portion of the house in terms also of the architectural style, it went from a very contemporary modern building to a more, um, essentially a more modern ramp style two story structure. So, this photos where is this a neighbor? Um, this is the adjacent neighbor, or is it further back? The adjacent this is the adjacent neighbor, the appellant for the previous appeal. And this is currently the flag lot, as you see here, from Buckingham Place. And here you'll notice the, the project, um, the public notice that's required, the flag lot. And you'll notice the there are story poles up there. So photo, the photos of the story poles right now. So which, which is a great segue to the part where the staff report is divided into three sections. The first dealing with, with site planning issues, uh, essentially it is a very similar site plan to the existing house. It's just enlarging the, the first floor footprint just a little bit on the westerly and southerly elevations. Um, they're maintaining the existing driveway but repaving it. They are proposing a new deck at the rear. But other than that, there are no major changes to this uh, site plan. It's also a unique property in comparison to other homes simply because you do have a flag lot. The building pad is around the corner on the flag lot, so it's not readily facing Buckingham Place as the other properties on Buckingham Place. And then the, the building pad is <coughs> way atop, at the very top of a deeply sloped, steeply sloped, that is, um, lot that goes straight down to Chevy Chase. So when you're driving Chevy Chase, it's not exactly visible other because there are no sidewalks. You'd have to crane your neck up and whatnot. So the, the location itself of the home and the building pad in relation to the streets and its topography is a unique set of conditions. Uh, the second item was mass and scale in terms of the staff report. Again, they are changing what is essentially a 2,000 square foot one story structure uh, to a two story, approximately 3,300 square foot structure. There is an, obviously an increase in floor area, increase in height. The architectural style, in terms of mass and scale, um, right now it's a simple moder simple ranch style home. Previous uh, uh, appeal project was a contemporary one. The, the new architect has essentially redesigned it so that they're simple forms, they're geometric, um, easy, visible forms. What's, it, the actual mass and scale itself, because they've moved the second story away on the easterly elevation, you'll notice here, this would be the easterly elevation, the front elevation that you would first notice when you drive into the flat, uh, on the flag lot and veer to the right. You'll notice this would be essentially the front elevation with the, the garage doors. Most of the fenestration is on the westerly elevation over the steep slope. That's to maximize the views over the canyon. Um, the rear yard is facing another sloped up angle. So again, it's an unusual set of circumstances. And the mass and scale, because they've tried to reduce the second floor, obviously it's not as massive as the previous proposal. Although we do know, as noted in the staff report, it is still the largest home in the survey area in the 300 foot radius. So this will be the largest home. Yet because of the conditions, the fact that it's tucked away over into over a flag lot on a building pad that's somewhat um, in the corner and because of this, this sloping lot and the way that the placement of the second story is done, that the mass and scale is somewhat um, acceptable in terms of its relation. And I see like board the member <laughs> board member Zerfin is trying to <laughs> yes <laughs> jump in. Questions? Yes. This house is right there. Correct. And how far is it on that property lot? Yeah. Now. Oh. It's on oh, this that one. Correct. Right there. Forgive me. This is this is the house. Yes, that is the the building outline. Correct. I have a 
question on the bottom two photographs. Is this the view of that house? Correct, yes. And I was going to get that to that later on. Okay, sorry, I put ahead. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. So, um, and also note that the overall height, and this would be to the um, tallest point of the ridge right here, is 28 feet. Correct. So it would be 28 feet. This is an R1R property. Um, the maximum height would be up to 32 by code. Uh, the existing, as you'll notice here, was actually um, 15 or 15 to the ridge and 17 to the top of the existing entryway. So you'll notice in the photograph. So am I looking at the roof of the back of the house or the entryway? On this, um, on this the back of the house. So, yes. Okay. Last but not least, building design and detailing. As, as I've already mentioned, the, it's, it's essentially changing from a simple gable ranch style house to a more contemporary or more modern interpretation of a ranch style two-story structure. The materials as presented and here is the color material board. And then also photographs of the existing property and of the neighborhood. Um, the architect has included aluminum doors and window frames with baked on it enamel finishes, um, architectural glass balcony railings and glass garage doors. Uh, there is a natural limestone stone veneer. This would be essentially on the front base. Um, standing seam metal roofing. And the overall color scheme obviously somewhat blends into more of an earth tone color palette and blends also with the adjacent structures itself. Overall, staff is supportive of the proposal because of all the various details in regards to its location on the flag lot. Um, it's also the way that the modifi um, it's been redesigned and modified to address the city council's issues with regards to mass and scale, the adjacent uh, compatibility of adjacent structures, and the actual design aspect of, of itself. Uh, there were three recommendations made. Uh, one would be to maintain the existing vertical landscaping along the easterly property line. This would be the landscaping that you see here in this photograph. That way it would continue to um, buffer the home from the street. Uh, second would be to provide a substantial landscaping at the base of the new deck. And again, this new deck is proposed along the rear. So right now, um, the landscaping plan does not indicate any vegetation, but staff is recommending more vertical vegetation to go ahead and screen that base. And then there is one aspect of removing this patio structure over the property lines in the rear that is unpermitted. So they would have to essentially remove it because they cannot legalize it. That concludes staff's presentation. Um, obviously, a little lengthy because of the past history of the case, but I'm available to answer any questions you may have. I wanted to note there, um, I received several telephone calls regarding this case. There was also a letter sent in which I forwarded to you from um, the adjacent property owner, Mr. Majarian. And because he is in the audience, I'm not going to go ahead. I had promised him that I would read the letter if he was unable to make it, but because he is in the audience, I'm going to allow him to speak, if that's all right, on, um, instead. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Open the public discussion. Um, Adam, I'm sorry, Aram Majarian. Hello, Richard. Alajajian. I can't read yeah. any of these letters. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. M's, L's, so so <laughs> You're you a whole name. new name. Sorry about that. My name is Aram Alajajian. I'm a project architect of the proposed project. If I may approach the board so I could basically walk you through what we have done. Yes, please. As far as the proposal. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, what we have here, as, as you uh, heard about the history of the project, we started where it was left off, you know, uh, uh, you know, years ago. This was 
approved by the board but was you know rejected from the city council i'm not going to get into that but we took under consideration all the comments and i watched the tape of the r b and the city council to understand the nature of this project and try to move on from there if you look at the uh, the existing building and the condition of the building is really deteriorating right now uh it's truly not you know great ranch style home that you know we look at it this element that pops out and i believe uh, sakai you were asking about that and one of the uh, oh the the photo over here that shows that this is that portion that basically pops out higher than any roof and there's there's a roof condition there and we try to resolve that as well but we what we propose to do if we look at the plans here uh, we're gonna uh, bring the, uh, the the garage a little bit the front in order to meet the 20 by 20 clear garage conditions in here, which wasn't there. And we're going to be locating this staircase, which will go up to the second floor. So the addition on the first floor will include the pulling out the entry door, which is really tack back, you know, uh, uh, when you when you come to the property, and uh, adding a breakfast nook area here and increasing the uh, floor area here at the uh, family room so and the kitchen creating a veranda which is open to uh, uh, to the view side and mainly the uh, the second floor addition happens above the changes change areas so that way we're staying away from over 60 percent of the of the building that it will maintain its current configuration and the way the building is designed so the eyesight slopes away it's basically from the low point to high point here. And if you look at the these pictures, it will tell you that the fragment of the front, which is only this portion here, that is about 80, 90 feet away from the street. So when you're driving uh, on the cul-de-sac, I mean, even a portion of this would be that little portion in here. So this section, this entire section is way back. If you look at the plan, it's another 10 feet back from the front. And this is just a column, supportive column, too, in order to create a little bit of a transition from a high point to low point and, and, and a support the trellis frame on top of the balcony. And those are all open, uh, you know, terraces down there. And uh, when you move to this side, that would be the only portion that is coming up towards the view. Now, looking from the, uh, that would be, I believe, from the east side, so this is the facade that more or less it will maintain its shape and the size. We will be replacing the windows, the existing windows with the new windows. And if you can see, you know, the second floor doesn't have any windows. Looking this way, this window is in a, in a restroom or on a closet back here. Yeah, there's a little window, but, you know, we can close it off. You know, it's going to be used for the ventilation purpose only. Now, uh, majority of the building would stay like a one story portion here you know and, and that portion there the second story addition will be on the away from the from the east side mainly concentrated towards the view side and then we are also proposing because it's such a narrow backyard we're also proposing to add a terrace it's not a full deck which is level with the house actually we're terracing down we're going down like three or four steps here uh, an additional three or four steps there. So this will be two different terraces coming off of that plateau, which will follow the contours basically and will and will give you more sort of a playground area or a uh, larger area as a backyard because this house is really doesn't have any, any yard area there. Now, uh, speaking about the finishes and materials, we picked uh, our tone colors and a natural stone, which would be basically running was the entry entry form here cement plaster on the second floor and, and and the majority of the house and then we have a wood elements wood trims and, and fascias we try to blend in the traditional ranch style with the contemporary elements here with some uh, glass railings and but we will have a wood handrail on the top and the bottom this is a two like six inch by four inch wood yeah wood handrail and we have wood accenting uh, uh, top of the windows here and openings will be accent like that back here and uh, and also at the at the balconies and wood trims around it with a with the wooden trellises 
Well, this is my presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. The trims and the garage door, are they wood or metal? This is metal, but it's painted to the same color. It's anodized finish, and we have um, sandblasted uh, glass, uh, which is not the... And the windows are all... Right. Aluminum-covered wood? Right. Because there is a band here. This is, this is not... Oh yeah, this was early done rendering just for to show you the massing, but this is what we proposed. This yeah. Is the more yeah, this is more current one. It's an early rendering with it. You know, we were studying we need to break it horizontality more, introducing another band of wood, which will only occur here if you look around the house, because this is the only two story section of it. You know, it wouldn't make sense to carry on this way. So if you drop the idea, that would be more of a No, I I was supporting this. That's, okay. that's good. Okay. This view would not be pretty to you because it's part of the neighbor's home. Uh, showing the story poles uh, addresses the two story element in that location. You look at the two story element. This is basically a where you want it and the, the vest for your design. Well, I wanted to get into that a little bit later on on my rebuttal. Because I know neighbors are here, and, they, and I wanted to talk about that, you know, how I envision this whole thing. But, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> talking about the positioning of this thing, you know, it's this is the only way I could put my building up here. There's no other way that I, that we could we could on this lot which contains this building in here. But, you know, the, the next thing is to be building on top of it, which we which we prefer to push it away as much as we can. If you look at this sight line. It's better to see this, you know, you know, uh, you know, accumulation or layers of the roof uh, moving away. And at distance, I want to mention to you, and I, I can, I can, you know, look at it here. I have some dimensions here. There's 23 feet from this building to here, and about 83 feet from here to this corner. Now, this is not a five-foot setback. We're talking about 80 feet, and this is, you know, very heavily landscaped here. First of all, and if you look at the positioning of the buildings, this is angulated. And if you look at that, you know, there's every building is angulated here. It's not, uh, you know, cookie cutter or track homes that one would block. Uh, you know, we can talk about this later. I think that was my uh, direction when when we designed. So two questions. One question, actually, the first question. Do you know by any chance what the height of the uh, building is? There are two-story buildings uh, on the both sides of our project. Right. Uh, yeah, the neighbor here, here, neighbor here has two two-story buildings, but I yeah. unfortunately I don't. Okay. Uh, assumably, it's uh, uh, probably you know if it's ten feet floor to floor, that's twenty twenty probably twenty five feet. Okay. Something like that. Um, question for you um, on your section, um, you're showing a flat ceiling there. Right. Would would the owner or would you be opposed to removing that ceiling, creating a vaulted ceiling there? The reason that I'm saying is that then what it will do is, I don't know, we would not be able to lower the roof, bring the, the, the you know, let the roof rafter sit on the top plate or lower in the header. Mm -hmm. And this way we would gain or reduce the height. At the same time, the perspective is somewhat, you know, it's proportion of the top and the bottom is just too identical. Um, so I think by lowering that roof line down... You're talking about this roof line? No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm talking about literally, you know, this thing is sitting on this joist. Okay. So if you, if you take this whole roof, bring it down to this level or even on top of this, you know, and then get rid of this, you have a vaulted ceiling, you know, roof lower. Yeah, that's uh, that has to do with the interior. I understand mm -hmm. what you, you, you said uh, actually, but uh, let me tell you what the the, the height so, uh, we could have gone up to. What was allowed? Oh, no, I understand. Feet. I'm just saying, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, detail wise, I think this is going to look much cleaner because if you bring this thing down here, well, sometimes we we're, we're do having a problem by running it through, and a vaulted ceiling. Yeah, it's something that could be considered. Of course, Thank you. I think that can be done. It would be actually nice to have. It. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Let me get through those letters. Brian Duran. Duran. I'll get someone's name right, maybe. Please state your name and address for the record. Good evening. My name is Brian Duran. I live at 2900 Graceland Way in Glendale. I'm the co-president of the Chevy Chase Estates Association, and I represent the 12-member Chevy Chase Board in objecting to specific design aspects of this project. This is because, for 75 years, the CCEA has had as its charter to protect the environment, to protect the well-being of the residents, and to enable the residents to enjoy the lifestyle in the canyon. We think that this project interferes with the enjoyment of the lifestyle of Mr. Majerian, a neighbor adjacent to this project, for the main reason that he has purchased a home that had a certain amount of view from his second floor. This project will essentially eliminate that view. I believe Mr. Majerian has submitted photos from the upper story, his second story, that uh, show what would happen when this house is built because of the height of the second story. Three years ago, we objected to this project, and at that time, the house height was 25 feet. This time, it's 28 feet, so the problem is worse. Therefore, we maintain our objection, even though we appreciate the applicant's desire to enhance their enjoyment of the lifestyle, we think that it's being done at the expense of Mr. Majerian, and therefore we think that this plan should be modified to enable, as I heard with the previous case, the ability of the house to go down slope. There's a certain amount of room for that in this, and at this point I think it's been an easy solution. It's, of course, a much less expensive solution to build from the plot that exists up, but it's at the expense of the neighbor whose view would be blocked. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. All right. Next, uh, Art Markarian. Up and state your name and address for the record. Yeah, my name is Art Markarian. I'm the neighbor at 2016 Buckingham Place. And the reason I'm here speaking today has to do with three major things. It's about consideration to neighbors, you know, here in the neighborhood that I live in also. I moved in about six months ago. It's about using the FAR uh, as an excuse to build up instead of build out, you know, and that affecting the neighbors. And lastly, setting precedent for a block where this hasn't been done yet. I know there are a lot of neighborhoods where things have been changed and shifted. The last neighborhood you were talking about, every house was a different style. We have a pristine, beautiful neighborhood. I love it. It's the reason you know, we paid so much to live up there. And part of the designer's intent, the developer's intent, was to preserve a certain view for everybody. Now, it's a great view. That's why they built those nice windows there. And currently, the residents of 2064 enjoy that view, and the residents of 2060 enjoy that view. But the way this house is being built, only the residents of 2064 are going to enjoy that view. I have a photo that was taken from the second story. I don't know if this was submitted to you, but it's tragic <laughs> what's happening to the second story view. Uh, a big part of the value of these homes is that, you know, that's a lot of the property value is tied up. What I did was I just took the story poles, I drew it out in Photoshop and blacked out the area. If you'd like to see this. And it's completely gone. And that goes for both uh, second story. And the reason for this has to do with the way they've built. They have 30,000 square feet. So yes, the project only occupies 10% of the lot. But what they've done is they've taken and built all of that uh, bulk up front. So I mean, I just drew this up while I was sitting there. Imagine if you have all this space to build and you're only building that one square exactly next to the neighbor. Yeah, the houses are angulated, but you can see from the view, all that doesn't matter. I mean, when you boil it down, following the story poles, looking at that picture, it's clear uh, what's happening. So, the, you know, when we think of remodel, we think of yeah, you know, redesigning the house, <coughs> adding a room, and that's been done on our block. But this is practically a whole new construction. It's 50% larger than every other house in the block. At 28 feet, it's taller than every other house in the block, and it impacts the view like no other home on the block does to its neighbor. They're getting a wonderful view. It's a nice house, but in context completely at the expense of the neighbor. 
Uh, during the city council meeting, I watched the video too and I was there. Uh, council member Draymond said, special attention to the properties immediately adjacent to the subject property. Not just general, but specific neighborhood compatibility. And these are the specifics that I'd like to address in this case. I, I don't want this precedent to be set on our block. Um, you know, what's next is my house could be endangered, all of our neighbors could die. And to that end, we actually had the neighbors on our block sign a petition and, you know, state how they felt about the issue. So our concern is mostly with setting precedent on our block, preserving the nature of our block where it's, it's courteous, it's, there's consideration. Every home is angled, if you see in the map, so to preserve everybody's view and keeping that intact. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Joseph Coscarelli. Please state your name and address for the record. Joseph Coscarelli. Excuse me. Cancer of the esophagus. Uh, Joseph Coscarelli. I'm at uh, 2055 Buckingham Place. I've resided there since 1971. <clears throat> My objection to this remodeling has to do with the significance of the, of the neighborhood. That remodeling will totally impact the neighborhood in an adverse way, which I hate to see. The gentleman before me expounded on that. I live across the street. I can only see that home when I'm in front, so I'm not impacted by my view. My view is outside the canyon. But initially, when this was formed, uh, this project, because I worked at Title Insurance and Trust Company during that for 10 years prior to going to the IRS, uh, this project, the homes were spaced, angled, and adjusted to the area. Granted, there has been remodeling, but in a very small way. This remodeling is massive compared to that which is we, we've seen in the neighborhood. <clears throat> I feel that uh, they attempted to do so two years ago. Now, if they needed the space, it appears to me that it would have been logical to have moved to an area whereby they could have had the 3,000, 4,000 square foot, which they find to be necessary. But in this case here, they do own the property. They do want to remodel. But the remodeling will significantly change the neighborhood, let alone the attitude as what is expressed by the, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Chippy Chase uh, Association president that was here. Uh, basically, that's my objection to it. And uh, I just hope that you foresee that uh, it's not something that's desirable for the neighborhood. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a question. Oh, sure. Uh, sir, you said your view is not impacted by this project. No, it's not. So what is your contention about this case? My contention is the neighborhood itself, the significance of the neighborhood. Okay. In other words, it's a very small community. The cul-de-sac is small. It was designed for the homes that were placed in there, that is, such as my home is uh, 19, 1,900 square feet, 1,980 square feet. And I do have a view outside. I've been there since 1970. I purchased it in 1971 when I was at Title Insurance and Trust Company, as a matter of fact. I just feel that although I only see that house, I'm trying to... That's my house right there that has a solar panel. Where is your house? This, this one right here. This one here? Uh, oh, I'll it. circle it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, right. I have the solar panel for the pool. That's out. So in essence, neither my view is impaired, but yet my concern is actually the neighborhood in itself. Um, it's objectionable to many of the people, which in essence has a tendency to bring about maybe slightly a less congenial neighborhood where, the, where the, the residents would form. I feel that uh, 
I feel that if the individuals wanted to have a house that was as massive as this, it would seem to me that rather than impairing the neighborhood, it would have been fine to have found a house that would have been acceptable. Not denying the remodeling, because possibly there could be remodeling, but in a different way, which would not impair the view of an individual such as the neighbor next door or the neighbors in the neighborhood that may be impaired by that uh, remodeling. Any other questions? Thank you. Well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Michael Majarian. Um, Michael Majarian here. Majarian. There was, there was a letter. He's late. Okay. We'll, we'll skip over. Is Gregory McGarrion? Okay. <laughs> Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Gregory McGarrion. Uh, I live at 2060 Buckingham Place. And uh, as uh, you know, um, as Philia, Ms. Philia said, I was the one who objected this last time, three, four years ago. And um, what I think here, it's um, the recommendations were given then, um, with the old respect to the architectural firm, um, they're, not, um, they're not respected, those recommendations. Um, if you allow me, I'll read a couple of lines from whatever I put down here. Yes, it was um, brought down to about between 400 and 700 feet, as was said, from previous design. But it failed to meet city council requirements to make design less intrusive and reduce mass and scale. We can repeat it's reducing mass and scale. We can repeat it as a mantra, but it's not repeating because, as you noticed, it was 25. Now it's 28 feet tall. And um, even that piece of um, view or light I had before, now I don't anymore. And, and I'll, I'll show a couple of photos here. Uh, the western facing slope offers uh, my neighbors a significant piece of real estate to place the expansion on, yet they choose to erect on a small spot. Of course, there's a FAR and uh, all the justification for that. The design firm, with all the respect to the works they do, either did not understand the recommendations or ignored it. It's 3,400 uh, 3, square foot, uh, square feet, and it's not just the largest home in this neighborhood, which is, uh, you can see in the report, it's 2,200 2, square foot, uh, the average square foot. This is the, by most, far larger. It's 50% increase, if you can do simple math here. Um, so the, you can argue they don't have, there was an argument here or, or a statement, so it's the only one. Uh, in between those two, which doesn't have a second floor, but that's what the original design was, um, to have one high, one low, and uh, so on. Uh, instead of bu building this house uh, downward uh, towards the western slope, they decided to erect vertically. Um, in the, uh, I'll just would like to bring to your attention a few notes I made. Um, a few notes were made um, during the city council uh, appeal meeting um, in 2009. Um, council member Laura Friedman said, "No one would have any problem, uh, any problem at all, if with, the, with this home, if they, they were develop a more modest home, and the one goes down the hill." Member uh, Draymond, in his closing comments, said, "Special attention to immediately adjacent." subject property, and uh, everybody uh, and DRB agreed, actually. City Council and DRB agreed. Um, sorry, is it my time? or um, Time is up. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll just take one more minute. So, we the really have another minute. <laughs> yeah, just as, 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 well, because I'm the can, main opponent of the project, so if you allow me to go up on. your comments with your colleague that's running late? The other person that lives at the same property address. Uh, yes, so you want me to take his time to continue? Probably. You could. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so um, 
it's interesting on the review, it says uh, due, to, due to substantial vegetation in the mature trees along the interior lines, the existing home is only partially visible from Buckingham Place. Well, this was brought up last time also. Those are my trees. <laughs> you want me to cut them down so it's going to be fully visible? I can do that. All the trees, vegetation between those property lines are all mine. And I can cut them down so, so nobody can make this statement anymore. So it's tacked behind my trees, the property tacked behind my trees. Um, it's not visible from Chevy Chase Drive giving curvature of the street. If this is a good project, good construction, why we're trying to hide it? What's going on if it's a good construction? Um, will not Im impact the property of surrounding property. I'm sorry. It's right in front of my property. Property value goes down. I have to stand by that. Okay. And uh, overall proposed plan is uh, compatible with adjacent developments. It is not compatible. Do you want me to bring a definition of what compatible is? I can bring that if somebody wants it. Um, in summary page, here, uh, five, uh, summary on page five, uh, it repeats, the proposed massing and scale of the project appears compatible with surrounding neighborhood. Let's think again why we say this over and over again. Probably somebody will not re read details, just a summary, and, uh, and, and so we can make this assumption, right? And uh, page six on the review of recommendations, maintain the existing vertical landscaping along the property line. Who do you recommend this to? To me, to maintain this property line, it's, it's my neighbor does not have any landscaping there. It's all mine, all my trees. So you recommend it here to maintain my property, uh, my my vegetation here. Well, um, I'm, I guess I'm done. I'm against the project. I just brought a couple of pictures for you to see how it's impacted. You saw in um, previous. Um, I think May I? Sure, please. Um, this is the view from uh, the window. The window. Um, straight right. from my son's window, actually. That's another one. There are two windows, and uh, they're blocked. Um, and I know in Glendale, view is not a problem. It's not an objection. I, I heard this last time. Is there any respect to the neighbor? I mean, I, I don't know what kind of argument I have to bring over to you to talk about this. I have a question. One of our neighbors last time said, how about you go down the street? This is expensive. Pro I apologize. This expensive project. We know that. It's, um, you can call it remodeling. 3,400 square feet. And you all are designers and architects. You know the cost of the project in Glendale. Why don't you go down the slope? What's, what's, what's wrong with that? Everybody will be respected. Neighborhood will have its, um, um, its you know, will keep its uh, structure view so, yeah. and uh, okay. beauty. I have a question. I have a question. It's a fundamental question. Your house yes. and house on the other side is two story. You're all on this. Let me ask a question. Let me ask a question. Sure. Your house is two story. The house on the other side of the property is two story. Sure. You're on the same grade. And you expect to have a view out your window on a second floor over your adjacent property, and they don't get a second floor. You actually expect that. Oh, Wait, what is your expectation that the, the person next door is not going to put? Uh, it doesn't have the same rights as you to put something there. I can agree with you, but how would I answer that? The, the applicant is right there. How would you say that? How would you answer that? I, 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 it's I important. I it's important. Right they have a beautiful view. They have all this slope. And it's right in front of the golf car course, and all the stuff is right in front of them. They don't need second floor to have that view. Do you? I'm you would really? You would? You're going to tell somebody that they can't have what you have? See, this is my. This is my point. If you had, if you were all one stories and you were all in the same grade, and he was proposing a two story, then you might have a point. But you have a two story, and you're at the same grade, and you're expecting he can look that you can look out the side property across his one story, so you have a two story view. It's my own view. I don't have any other. Did you have an expectation when you no. bought your house that no, you could have a one an undestructive view over the person's house? I'm just, I just I want to know that because it's important. If I was to if I was to deny him, I'd have to say that you have rights over his second floor. I don't. You're telling me he has wait, that. Wait, well, well, I, I'm just saying. I, I want you to explain to me how I could tell him to not have a second floor when you have a second floor. How do I tell him that? How do I tell him that? There's nothing to talk about it. 
No, no, no. Let's go back on the microphone. Speaking back on the microphone. Okay. I just want to understand how he I would tell you. He no, has no, a view. No, no, no. Forget that for one second. I'm not objecting. He, he has to do whatever he can do. I'm saying, how would I explain that to him that he couldn't have a two-story when you have a two-story? My proposal is to, and not just mine. It was uh, here uh, three years ago, and uh, Laura Friedman said the same yeah. thing. You can build down the slope, terraces. Why does you he need have to build down the slope? Why should he build down the slope? <clears throat> well, we can say, why you even live here? You have a two-story <laughs> house. Yeah, you have a two-story house. Yes, I do. I, I think that we're not going to get anywhere on this. So. I, just, I was hoping <laughs> to get an answer that I, I could I, use. I just don't even understand the argument where this argument goes. Why you have two-story, why he cannot have? He can have two-story. But he can go down, build down. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I think that's his answer. He <laughs> okay. can have that's a two-story, but thank he you. can go down. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Your time is actually up, and you use the other person that can point help. Point any um, we, you, <laughs> unless, no, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I think we understand your points. If um, The view and the... It's, and everything, Mr. Gilles, if I may... You have to... Um, I'm sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we have to move on to the next person. We have to earn an opportunity. I'm chair. I'm going to... I'm, we're going to wrap this up. I need to leave in about 10 minutes. So if you want my comments, we need to. But we have one more speaker. Okay. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just going to have to. And, they, and, they have, and then we have a rebuttal. <laughs> We'd love your comments. Right. Noreen Mizelli. Ms. Merit. Here's the only You state your name and address for the record. Noreen Mizelli. I live uh, 2060 Buckingham Place, Ages and Building. 2016. 20? 16. 16. Ages and neighbor okay. to the construction. Okay. And I'm eager to tell you the answer to the question. I, I just will use some time. You were asking why we have two stories and they should not. Mm -hmm. oh, you need to speak in the mic. Yeah. If you look at the cul de sac, none of the houses who, who, who are on this side of cul de sac with you are two stories. There are only one story because behind them there's another layer of the houses, two story houses. They don't have any view, and they don't block any. They can, as, can be as high as Jay, can you they want. To the White story. House, right to the south of that. What is no, no, the one to the left? That one. He's not blocking yeah. anything. Is that is, is, it, can, is that the two story? Is that a two story? The one that he's pointing right now. Anyway, you're taking, you're taking away from your time. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's the. I'm sorry. Besides the height yeah. issue, do you have any other comments about the I mean, consideration for the, uh, the This or? construction is, I mean, mass and scale. I don't want to repeat everything again, but I'm, I strongly believe if you, 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 you should not build a house at the expense of your neighbor and I just uh, enjoy your view and, uh, I mean, blocking. You saw how, uh, how the windows were blocked. It's blo I'm not talking about you now. It's, the windows are blocked. Right. I think we understand. And the lies would not would be not. Uh, I mean, completely different. With this, uh, with uh, with uh, this situation, when they have to this whatever the lot they have, using only this flat land to to build a house is not a common. Is not a, t a tradition in this. If you go down uh, by Caldesac and go down Buckingham, you you will see all the two-story houses are built on a slope. So that way you, you, you will have this house that blend in into, into terrain and that stand, not stand up and, and, and uh, cut everybody's attention around as a massive construction. The project that he proposed is obviously suggests that the, uh, the, uh, they are developing deck in the front uh, on, the, on top of this steep uh, whatever. The deck is not sitting by itself. It will supposed to be, uh, have a retaining wall with the arms to support it. If you are doing all this, going through all this travel, why not consider to build your two, only two, ma two, ma uh, two bedrooms on the second floor? Why not consider to create another floor for yourself with more uh, blended into the terrace under this deck and just enjoy the view the way I, uh, as everybody else are enjoying? This type of construction will, will look nicer from a, from a side because with the deck and the one floor and the second floor, you see three layers going up. What is under the deck, the bedrooms and, and the floor will show very nicely, I mean, blend into the, so everybody else. Just look at the ter terrain, terrain and see how other build the houses on this neighborhood, just exactly the same way I'm, I'm saying. Why specifically he needs to build? The, if, if, had he not blocked anybody's uh, window, I would say probably, but he is. 
Okay. It's not about money, because the money already, I mean, spent on the terrace. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Thank you for Thank coming you. and speaking, though. Um, would you care, could we, we need to get Mr. McLeakin's yeah, comments. Very brief. Very brief. Just, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to, uh, although there were a lot of comments here, you know, and I kind of feel that it's, uh, you know, against one neighbor here, but that's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to address the architectural issues. Uh, uh, Mr. McGarrian, I, I believe he's an engineer, and he brought up, his keep there, keep bringing up this question of building on a hillside, on a slope, and all that. Well, one thing is very obvious. If you're building on a slope, your height of the building will go up considerably because of the, uh, considering the bottom of the slope and the top of the roof. So we study that it's not going to meet the, you know, uh, the height issue. Besides the slope, uh, you need to really spend a lot of money and in whose expense? If Mr. McGarian is willing to pay that expense, I think that's we are ready to exercise that as an option, you know. But I believe this is the best we could have done within that plateau. And just to address some of the buildings, you know, there yes, there are two-story buildings that are looking at the view side. And again, I I took some uh, just the aerials just to show you the orientation of the building, uh, and I would like to submit those. I can. I can tell you that the building you is... talk in the microphone? I'm sorry. You can submit it and then... Yeah, let me, I need to see it. Okay. Is it anything different than what we're seeing right now? Yeah, slightly different. This is looking from the top. You can see how the building is angled. And, uh, and the view from those two windows is basically looking where his trees are, in my opinion. You know? I mean, you already have this one-and-a-half-story building wall, which is next to you. It's standing there. So whatever we're doing, we're moving some hundred feet away from your window. I mean, that structure, the second story, start building away from the hundred, hundred feet away from that window. And then the slopes of the roof, we took it the minimum a 3 to 12 pitch. We are not using 4 to 12. If you're going with the ranch style, you know, we, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, I'll let you go. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. Yeah, I'll Mr. go Lillian. really quick. <laughs> and... Um, Oh, first of all, um, I'm yet to be proven that the project is not consistent. I think um, Council had an amazing findings of denying the project of the last one because I don't think that that was consistent. You know, I agree 100%. But I think what we're dealing with right now is that something that is very um, coherent and, and it's consistent. Um, and I have not been convinced that a two-story cannot be placed in. It is within the rights, and also they're not setting a precedent. Uh, as far as the view, um, I'll, be I'll be more than happy to comment on that, but if we are directed by the council right now, if I make my decision based on the view of blocking a view, then I would be going against what has been told. So um, until the council makes a decision for us and give us a, a, a direction as far as um, you know, blocking somebody's view. And, and the big question is, what is view? I mean, view of a tree, view of a hill, view of a cityscape. So there's a lot of these questions that the council has been kind of, and I've been um, hearing all kinds of arguments, but again, until I get the proper direction of how to address that from the council, I'm not here to say that a view is blocked. Um, as far as the height is concerned, um, I think there is room to lower the height. I think there is definitely room to remove the ceiling of the building and lowering the roof down uh, further. Uh, the plate heights, you know, right now it's set at nine feet. I think it can be lowered to uh, eight, if or on top of the window, and um, and then by removing the ceiling, I think you're going to gain the height that you're looking for inside the building. Um, that is that has to do with the the style and, 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 and basically just eliminating the plaster above the window head, headers. Um, but as far as, uh, it is unfortunate, but it, I mean, they're, they're adding um, square footage that is way within what it, they're allowed. I think it's 0.11% FAR. Uh, and, and, and yes, they are going to have the largest home in the neighborhood, but they also have the largest property in the neighborhood. So um, so the question comes, let's say the argument of, of pushing this building down to make that 
two-story or lower section, then you're still going to have the FAR issue. So, so there's no way that we can avoid having the floor area. Now, as far as lowering the second floor, um, I think the, um, the architect explained uh, the height of the building looking from Chevy Chase side is going to be substantial. So I'm not really sure how that can be done. If my colleagues want to exercise that and come up with a solution for that, you know, uh, I'm for it. But uh, at this moment, the way it, it's sitting, I think it is a substantial design change from what it was originally. Uh, I think the architect has has listened to, this is my opinion, he has listened to the um, what the council directed, and he has come up with a design that fits the neighborhood. Um, it, it is not visible from anyone except the corner. It is sitting back almost 80 feet from the cul-de-sac. And um, to set, you know, um, I think a gentleman here spoke that um, it's a significant impact to the neighborhood. I honestly have not been proven why it's going to be significant, only because of square footage. And square footage on that, well, no one's talking about the largest property in the neighborhood. Um, and, you know, they do have a building. Every, almost every other house there is a two-story. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but I think as it stands, I have not been proven by anyone not to deny it or, or deny this and not, not approve it. But um, I am in support of the project. I do want to see the roof lowered, uh, the height. And, um, and the, just one quick comment on the pictures that we see from inside, standing inside a room, Looking out, um, the height of that ridge line that it's shown on the stakes are most probably the same, if not maybe a little bit higher. But lowering that a little bit, they'll be pretty much consistent with the same height. The person is standing on the second floor. That means they're about, let's say, 10 feet off the ground, and they're about 5 foot, let's say, 6 foot tall. So they're about 16 foot eye level, looking straight up. And those buildings are taller, so even if they would build a building across the, across there and then look back, they would see the same mass. So literally, it, it's not really creating anything other than a two-story building. It's not massive. It's not really outstanding in the sense that, you know, this, yes, I agree. I 100% agree. If this was being built, we have a problem. But what I'm seeing is, honestly, I have not been proven otherwise. So that's where I am, and um, I don't know if I can. I can't make a motion, so I'm leaving. So that's my two cents. So sorry, I have to leave. Okay. All right, Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Good. So, um, okay. should I? Um, not to repeat everything, I just wanted to say, uh, sh um, maybe share a very short story. Uh, a few years ago, we had a similar situation that. Uh, all, all of a sudden, a neighbor decided to add a second floor, and uh, and a very tight light lot that they said that's the only way to grow. And I was the only one who talked about the the view issue. B before I was able to finish my sentence, I was cut off by our city planner and uh, uh, Tim Tim Foy, our own Tim Foy, and and he mentioned that we have no uh, jurisdiction over view protection. Uh, and that was the end of the conversation. However, it, uh, the case went by, by the city council, and the city council uh, approved it. Um, so we, what I'm trying to say is that it's understood your 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 comments about view issues uh, are. Um, are received well, and we understand what you're talking about, but we cannot base our decision on views because there's a right issue that everyone has, and we, we don't have jurisdiction over views yet. Um, and I think uh, some of these uh, characterizations, this is not a complete uh, way of showing the reality because there's, there's, there are slopes, there are there are distances involved that um, allows you to have light plus views. Uh, this is a complete blockout. It's not what <coughs> the building is about. Sir, 
No, I'm sorry you can but but no I I understand what you're saying but but what I'm trying to say is that you don't understand uh, buildings in a frozen state. You you the the view is not uh, something that you can say there is my view and now it's not there because because you you have a cone of vision and you 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 understand space in motion. Um, so if the if the building was cutting light as the one of the points that was made by by the city council uh, into the n neighbor's home, that's one thing. But if you have 80 feet away uh, building that's sloping and has nothing to do with cutting light into your building, then uh, I think that kind of takes care of that. So <coughs> to cut it short, I think the architect has really taken into account the uh, comments by city council and made a building which is uh, compatible. Not to be redundant or repetitious uh, of what the, the two colleagues have said already in addition to Mr. Giragos here, but uh, I have to state the following, that comparing the City Council's motion with the report presented by staff, uh, my conclusion is that the architect has addressed the Council's concerns. Now, uh, the view issue is something that we cannot dictate here. Uh, there is no ordinance. There is no clear direction by the council. We can give our opinions, but that counts for nothing. Uh, at the end, what is a view? Whose view is being protected? What limited view anyone can have? If I have purchased my house on that street, do I have more rights for view than the next door neighbor. In addition to that, and the reason I asked the gentleman earlier if he had any concerns about the project itself and his response was not. Uh, so there is misconception apparently in some people's minds that because they were able to see to some distance, now the new project will come and become an obstacle for their view. So that is one of the reasons they do not want any new projects. On top of that, when you, you have a majority of uh, houses being two stories, coming here and saying that I don't want this one to be a two-story house does not make logic to me. Uh, the previous design obviously the humongous box, whatever you can call that, uh, could have been, and it obviously was uh, contested by the city council or overturned by the city council. The present design is more contemporary and blends much better with the neighborhood style and the neighborhood character. So with the staff recommendations, uh, this project does have my approval. First of all, I want to apologize. I didn't mean to get strident with you. I apologize with that. I, I'll just let me just say, let me just say this. I apologize. I didn't mean to, to bang on you like that. I, but I appreciate everybody coming out. As you as is your right, you should contest when somebody is uh, proposing something. So I didn't want anything I said to stop anybody or hinder anybody from coming up and speaking because I that was not my intent. I think what I was getting at was that it's difficult. You, you put us in a not that it matters, but uh, it puts you in a it puts us in a difficult position to deny something that someone else has and to have them do quite a bit in order to maintain your right that they don't get so it's it's a difficult position I was trying to relay that so I apologize for for banging on you like that um, I do think that uh, the property is is pushed way back the area that's being added is small I'm tickled that the city council denied that one because I think it would have been a very inappropriate building. Um, this was added, this portion was added where it should be added. I think it was added nicely. I think the section, that whole back end of the property, that as you look at the front of the building, that whole right side towards the back is all existing. That's all what's there now. 
So really what we're talking about is a small area that they're adding on the second floor, and I don't see denying them that. Um, I do just have a little couple of architectural things, sort of like on the last project also. You're proposing a 10-foot plate on the first floor, which again creates all kinds of issues um, on the front facade. I guess the existing has a 18-inch or almost two-foot rise to the main floor. So when you add the 10-foot on there, it creates all kinds of issues with the garage door again with how that looks. So I would hope that would be addressed in some way. And then I, I didn't realize until I was here that that space above the garage door is actually balcony and not a window. I didn't understand that before. Now I do. So, um, and then one of my issues was how that looks a little top heavy, you know, in that one area. And, and I could sort of see why you would want to do that because you're making an element stacking like that. But the view is off to the side and there is a certain amount of asymmetry when you look at the whole facade. There might be a question that that panel to the left of that opening might actually be just a continuation of that post and beam that comes around. So maybe generate a little bit of asymmetry in there that might minimize some of the top heavy sense that, that's there now. So um, those would be some of my comments. I think it was, it's a good revision off of what was done previously. Supportive of the project with a couple of what I would hope become conditions. So. Okay, well, um, without repeating what my colleagues have said, I think, um, um, you know, if we could consider view as an element in denying a project, um, we would probably have a long discussion up here. Um, but like we've said numerous times, it's, it's hard for us to say that a view, blocking someone's view because someone else has a right to a certain size or um, way of life is um, it's not within our purview. So I appreciate that you all came out here and you have these concerns and they're good to air out. I mean, I need to it's your right, like, like Mr. Garrigo said, to do that, and we're very sympathetic to that, but we we can't deny a project based on the fact that one person's view will go away because um, a second story is added, especially since the precedent of having a second floor has already been set by having all these houses in the neighborhood have a second floor. Uh, if you said this is the only house that has a second floor and, and everybody else has, a, has only one floor, um, it would probably be a different story because you can say, well, it's a different kind of precedent for the neighborhood. Um, so. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I, I can see that, you know, obviously this can change your your view of the of that um, that side of your house. Uh, I don't think it'll be as bad as your mock-up because, again, the architect has taken great strides to pull the house away and and not put windows that look directly into your second floor, which is you know a common common practice in Los Angeles. You have very tight, narrow setbacks, and a lot of times you look right out your window to somebody else's. I mean, had this been a browned up new house, I think I would have had more different comments about the replacement of the house, replacing the second floor in a different position. But because is, we're talking about an existing home, the architect has you know, tried to minimize the amount of uh, effort and money that the uh, applicant has to spend on producing the second floor in a way, manner that is considerate to the architecture style and, and um, creates a nice home. So I think that, you know, all these things together, he's done a really good job in, in addressing the city, city's comments, uh, addressing the site, and addressing the, the, the topography and the architecture style. So uh, I also had a comment about the front window. I think that that was like my, my only things I thought that that was a little strange, um, that it seemed like you wouldn't do a balcony with a cutout in front of a window. Um, a lot of times people like to open it up. So uh, maybe Mr. Garagos's idea to open up the whole thing, take that wall to the... Um, I guess when you're looking at the left of it away and kind of create more of an asymmetrical front. I mean, no one's really going to see it. We don't need to really consider it in terms of um, street frontage, but I think it will um, – actually, I think it will look fine, fine with the house uh, elevation. So um, maybe play around with that. I don't know if it's – for me, it's not a really a, a need to have. I think it's just something that may be a consideration for the architect. Um, just want to mention like the previous house that we had, and you're talking about the view and how the view is a consideration. And um, you're looking at that elevation. I said I don't see that this house has that element to it where they're really concerned about the view. You know, this house does have that on the west elevation where you look at the side elevation. And you go, oh, there's a lot of windows. They they aren't all open. You know, walls of glass. But obviously, this house 
his concern about the view. They're looking out these windows to a view. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at for the last applicant, that the way that you manipulate the openings and the way that you present the glazing determines like what your view is going to be and how much of it you're going to receive. So I think that that was well done as well. My only comment would have been to put, when we placed the second floor more towards the rear of the property on the rear part of the existing home. But again, like you were saying, the expansion on the first level is going to be happening in the front. So taking advantage of all that construction, it does make sense to push it in the front. So I guess the only other comment I have is one of your details mentions wrought iron on the handrail, the glass railing, and that was very confusing. So I think just if you just please edit the detail. And I'm not sure that I'm in favor of wood. I kind of see all these, especially since you're going to do aluminum cladding on the windows and you're going to have metal on the garage doors, that an aluminum handrail or what would be called like a glass frame for the railings would be appropriate versus wood. So does someone want to make a motion? Does that have any comments or recommendations? Do you want to go over the conditions? Sure, we could go over the conditions. One condition that Board Member Malikian mentioned that I'm not sure if it came into your discussion was the idea of eliminating the flat ceiling, which would open up the possibility of producing a cathedral ceiling, which could bring down the roof height by some couple of feet at least. And I wasn't sure if there was consensus or because that's a significant change from what's proposed. I think that's an internal change. I think the point was that there are ways to bring the roof down. I think we're all in favor of losing some height. Which could be done through that change. Yeah, that's one way. Okay, then that condition stands. And also possibly by lowering the plate height, the existing first floor plate height by at least a foot. I think we're all, like we all said, we're all in favor of minimizing the impact to the neighborhood, but we can't consider view. So if we can do it through architecture. When we write the conditions, we try to be somewhat specific so that when we work with the, if this is given to staff, if you want to see this again, then you'll be making the same considerations. I think we want to condition that you work with the applicant to try to reduce the height, and that could be a method of doing it. Right. Do you want to give them a footage? Why don't we just say, I think there's probably two feet it can come down. So why don't we just say two feet and then they can decide the best way to do it. Approximately two feet. Okay. At the front facade, two board members seem to agree that the cutout at the balcony wasn't appropriate and perhaps opening the left side to open the balcony and have a lintel that continues across and then creates a post at the corner that will then merge with the trellis would be a good solution. And. Not conditioning that. That's a condition. I think it's more consideration. More consideration. Okay. The garage door for me is more of a condition, if that's okay. Yeah, and the height of the garage door is similar to the last proposal. Some architectural element that. And. Bring it up. This gets a little bit heavy on that. Right. Something that continues. And would a taller door solve that problem? A taller door or just another lintel piece down below the other lintel? Another element? Or like a trellis piece that comes out just like a foot or two feet out or something like that. Just down low. Just down low. It doesn't have to come out very far. It doesn't even have to come out at all. Just a wood piece coming down below, like a pre-sole down below. I think we just have to say that minimize the mass above the garage door. Element above the lintel level. The empty wall space. Which could be a trellis. It could carry on the garage door element, yeah. Okay, or an architectural element to reduce the sense of mass above. Put something on the wall. You could have a lever, a trellis, a short trellis. Well, I wouldn't want something just like a medallion place. No, no, no. If you want it to span the whole length of the door. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's about this whole thing. Would you want that element to integrate then into the opening to the left? No, I think the element sits on that trim piece that goes around. It's about the length of the garage door and that whole piece. Some element 
dealing with the fact that the garage door is low. Okay. And that it seems out of scale. And I thought I had one more from, oh, the handrail detail. Um, Chair Sakai felt that the wood element would be better to be replaced with a metal railing element, which is shown, I guess, in one of no, the details. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. It, it is labeled as a uh, wrought iron top rail, and it's. I think it's just a mistake on the... Yeah, wrought iron would be strange, but you're thinking of uh, aluminum or... It that matches the windows and the, right. and the garage door. Okay. Yeah, wood, but, right. uh, metal. Yeah. You think wood? I think no, metal. I thought you were saying... No, I think uh, metal. <laughs> But not wrought iron metal. Not wrought iron. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that's everything that I've got. Make a move to approve the project what? with conditions. Second. Yes. 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 I have a stain. I have stain. Three or four. Okay. Uh, it still passes, right? All right. Three zero. So, and forgive me. Let me just read that into the record because it looks like my microphone was off. Uh, the motion was made by Board Member Garagos and seconded by Board Member Zarifian. In terms of roll call, Board Member Garagos, Karo. Yes. Karotlian and Zarifian all voted yes, and Chair Sakai abstained. Um, and the record is going to show that Mr. Malikian had to leave after making comments, so technically he's considered absent. Okay. Okay. So, so it passes. Yes. <laughs> if anyone confused in the audience. Yes. Um, so the motion, the motion passes three zero. We have one remaining item on uh, business, which would be the minutes from January the 24th. Yes. Does anyone have any comments on the minutes? Is there a motion on the minutes? I uh, let me double check. Didn't. Oh, and forgive me. Um, we have board members Garagos, Malikian, Zarifian, and Chair Sakai were all present. Yes. So we can sign it. <laughs> I didn't print them out. I didn't. Oh, you want a copy? Here you go. Make a motion to approve the minutes of uh, January 24th, 2013. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion made by Board Member Garagos, a second by Board Member Zarifian. Um, in terms of a roll call, Board Member Garagos? Yes. Board Member Zarifian? Yes. Chair Sakai? Yes. The motion passes 3 0. Okay, and we're, no more comments? We're adjourned. Thank you.